Hi, Roy here on Yard of Random Books and today I'm unboxing, unboxing work by an author who according to English Heritage is among the most prolific and successful children's authors ever. Who They also point out she's been criticised for various aspects including formulaic plots, deliberate use of simple language, social snobbery, racism and sexism. So do I dare open the box? Well this is work by Enid Blyton, for it is she who has those qualities and one thing that occurred to me about Blyton is that she's always been around in my reading life so the first book I ever remember being given as a gift was an Enid Blyton, The Wishing Chair Again. It was my fourth birthday, first time I even remember having a birthday, first time I remember getting a present, so all those concepts were like coming at me. Kind of interesting given the sort of stuff I like reading now that the first book I had was a sequel um, and it was great, it's that there's these kids, they have this chair that sp periodically sprouts wings and once the wings are grown, it will take you anywhere you want to go into sort of fantastic realms. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, also, Noddy was one of hers. I believe it's her most successful thing, given all the merchandising. So Noddy is this little character. Uh, I'm not really sure, quite sure what he is. He lives in Toyland. But whether he himself is a toy or some other kind of entity, not entirely sure. But lives in Toyland, has a friend called Big Ears, and uh, we had picture books of, of him as well, which were early things I learned to read with. Um, in fact, I was not only reading Noddy, I was kind of consuming him as well, because he, he appeared on packets of a breakfast cereal called Ricicles, which had the, according to the advertising slogan, Ricicles are twicicles as nicicles. Although they've now been withdrawn from sale. Um, Kellogg's came to the conclusion that their, their sugar content was so high that as part of the sort of, a sort of public health thing, they would discontinue ricicles. So ricicles have gone the way of radium cocktails and soda with actual cocaine in it in that they're no longer available because of their devastating effect on the human body but at the time the sugar was a good thing it gave gave kids energy and noddy was right there on the box sort of shilling for the contents um we there was a record as well i remember it was one of those like collect coupons and send off for this record which I was really excited to get. Uh, it was an EP, so seven inch record played at 33 and a third with a bunch of noddy things on it. I think there was a bit of a story and some songs and I hated that when it came because that wasn't what noddy sounded like. Um, I just thought these babbling morons doing these shrill songs, that's not real Noddy. So just like fans today who are like, oh, you know, they, they've got it wrong. <laughs> um, even the author can get things wrong. You know, the fans, the fans have the ownership. So it was that kind of disappointment. I learned a brutal lesson, which is that if you're a fan of something, you can't rely on people making adaptations in any medium to get it right to your vision. So in a way that almost acted as kind of a vaccine for adaptations. So I don't really care now um, about, you know, adaptations not being faithful to the source material. I just view them on their own terms. So maybe it was good that that terrible, terrible record came along and disillusioned me about how how that sort of thing was going to work. 
Anyway, yes, so Blyton and her and her works. These aren't Noddy or Wishing Chair books. They are going to be, I hope, some um, Famous Five and Secret Seven books. So it occurred to me, I don't know why I was thinking this, that I did like the Secret Seven sort of children's mystery detective gang books, a bit like the Hardy Boys. Uh, but for some reason, I'd never read and always felt slightly resistant to the Famous Five. So part of the plan is, when I've opened the box, is to, and seen the what, what damage has been done, um, <clears throat> part of the plan is to read at least one from both series and see a number of things. You know, are they any good? Bear in mind that they're supposedly fourth rate and full of snobbery and all sorts of other things. How do the two series compare? Can I can I bear to read a famous five book? Or is my early indoctrination to the Secret Seven still prevent me from doing that? Is there some sort of blight and verse? You know, do these teams like know about each other? So uh, yeah, lots to play for. I guess you could say the famous five are the more, f are the more, as the name implies, they're the better known ones. So if if Enid Blyton was Marvel, the famous five would be the Avengers, and the Secret Seven would be more like the Defenders. Uh, which is not to say they're not any good. Okay, so I've got the got the quavers which makes for a bit of a messy unwrapping never mind um, looks like there's plenty of uh, hate this uh, yep big bubble big, big bubble wrap experience coming right I'll still need the still need the knife of opening uh, so these books are still published now. I gather that they've had editorial amendments over the years to things like character names. Um, and I didn't really want to get current ones. I wanted to get more like what I remembered. Um, so. so here's a bunch of Enid Blyton. I mentioned in another video how when I first read some of these, I binge read them it's the first time i can remember reading some like multiple books in one day and kind of sending myself half crazy in the process uh, so cheers enid blyton for that so i've mentioned her critic critics obviously her defenders would say but they got kids reading and people love them right so here's a typical one five go adventuring again um Five go to Demon's Rocks. Interesting. Five on a secret trail. Five have plenty of fun. Five on a hike together. It's that five again. Uh, fall into adventure. This isn't America, so it's not a pun on autumn. They're going to fall, you know, this sounds like plummeting might occur. They're off to camp. They go to Smuggler's Top. Um, they've got, uh, yeah, illustrations. Right, here's ones I probably will have read. Well done, Secret Seven. There's lots of stuff I remember about this. I mean, the signature, this, her signature, which would be emblazoned on all her books with this, these like two lines as part of it. I think that's probably the first like logo that I ever recognized. Um, I, I remember the publisher's logo, the Knight Books with a little chess figure and things like the way this seven sort of goes across two color areas that 
that, you know, those, those, those were like design features that would be um, some somehow made an impression on me as a sort of eight year old or whatever. So Secret Seven, the Secret Seven have thrilling adventures. Read this book and take part in one of them, exclamation mark. A young visitor to their tree house puts the Secret Seven on the trail of some thieves. But first of all, they have to unravel some strange clues. Okay, that sounds like a pretty typical plot. Treehouse. Um, yep, I think that looks more like a shed than a treehouse. Uh, and they're totally unproblematic SS logo that they themselves have for the, the Secret Seven. Um, also got, there's only two Secret Sevens, see? The Secret Seven always get, always get somehow overshadowed by the famous five. Uh, I think this is the first one just called the Secret Seven. At one point it's cost 10 pence. And uh, yeah, very, very much the style of, style of illustrations I remember. Uh, let's see, 1967. Yeah, these would be the ones. Um, yeah, plans for an SS meeting. <laughs> okay, there are the seven. One of the seven is a dog. I can't do pet videos because I haven't got any pets, but maybe maybe I'll find some way to leverage the appearance of a dog in this story into something that will get my YouTube views up into the into sort of um, spectacular amounts. There they are encountering a suspicious looking adult so yeah Enid Blyton not sure what I'll get round to these but that's the plan I've got a sort of a control but like I say it's secret seven versus famous five for me as a kind of experimental control thing sample I've got a, one book from a series I'd never heard of called the five finder outers so yet another group, the mystery of the invisible thief uh, is this one. So we'll, we'll see what the five finder outers are all like. So if the famous five of the Avengers, the secret seven of the defenders, these five finder outers in Marvel would be like the champions, I suppose. But they'll 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 give me a, you know, third third leg to the stool. So that's my Blight and Toba all lined up and ready to go. Back soon with something completely different. Thanks for watching. As always, delighted to see subscribers and new visitors here. Um, great if you leave a comment and I will see you soon. Bye.